Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman, and our next guest up is a true entrepreneur, Sebastian Parides of Interlix Staffing. Welcome to Radio Entrepreneurs. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much for, for the opportunity. So tell us a little bit about your background, which is fascinating, and uh, a little bit about your journey and um, finally about Interlix. Why don't we start with your background a little bit? Yeah, so I was born in, in Ecuador. Uh, I grew up in Ecuador until I was eight years old. And, you know, kind of the same as, you know, the immigrant stories. Uh, my family came to, to New York uh, for the search of a new future. I got relocated to Washington Heights in, in New York. And then obviously, you know, I spent uh, my teenage life. And after that, in New York, became very New Yorker. And then for college, I went to, to Babson College and I ended up staying in the Boston area afterwards uh, for Interlix. Great. So tell us um, uh, your the foundation of Interlix and what it is that you do. I know it's got a connection to uh, Latin America. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about Interlix and how you how you founded the company. Yeah, so just like since I arrived to to New York, I was always a very entrepreneur person. And, you know, like I said before, like I come from an immigrant family. We were always in need. So I was tr always trying to find a way to make money. So this comes all the way from the beginning of my entrepreneur journey. So I actually started, you know, Washington Heights is a very Latino place. I started getting involved in the music industry. I started doing freestyling. So I know I don't know if you have seen the movie A Mile Eminem, doing the same no. stuff but in Spanish. So that's kind of how I first uh, stumbled into the Latino community and you know back to my roots. And from there, I you know I grew up, started doing events. And, and we actually ended up uh, getting sponsored by some energy drinks, and then that led me to go and be able to attend Babson College, uh, which you know I started looking for other ways of of making entrepreneur journeys because I realized the music industry is very tough and sometimes it doesn't allow for for career uh, to for your career to develop further than than some limitations that there is. So I started going to networking events, trying to find something uh, going into my senior year. I try everything from trying to sell watches to throwing uh, party events in the Boston area, in some clubs over there, anything possible that I could do before I graduated because I knew once I graduated, I had to work or do something, uh, you know, uh, do something when it comes to working, which was probably going to be finance, which I'm not a fan of it. So I did everything and anything. And just because of me going to so much networking events, I met a lot of people which were looking for developers. They were looking for software developers in the Cambridge area, startup area. And I had no intention when, when it came to starting Interleaks. I just told some people there, hey, look, I have cousins in Ecuador. They are software developers. And it's the same time zone. And obviously, you can also save costs if you hire them. So I first actually connected my cousin from Ecuador with a startup in Cambridge. And the next week, I went, it's called Venture Cafe. It's every week. Next week, I went to Venture Cafe. I met the same startup founder. And he told me, hey, Sebastian, do you have more cousins? I want to hire more of them. <laughs> And then I was like, you know, I'm Latino, I have a big family, but let me see if I can find more, more of them for you. So then I realized the need of, of developers first. Um, and then slowly I transitioned more into remote professionals, looking for people that have a multinational and corporation uh, experience. And then also we, we still do placements of developers, but now more into marketing specialists, accountants. And that was, kind of, that was basically how Intellect Staffing started. Obviously, there has been a lot of turning around the business, making sure the model is is the best. But yeah, I stumble in the staffing world by by accident. <laughs> hmm. Well, very often the uh, the best accidents uh, lead to great success. So it sounds like uh, your 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 uh, your pivots have allowed you to to really identify a need in the marketplace. Tell us um, a little bit about uh, you know are you are you beyond Ecuador in terms of sourcing talent? Are you all over Latin America? And um, uh, interesting because I personally did not know that Ecuador is a hotbed of uh, software development. <laughs> um, so I guess there's developers everywhere. Uh, are are these companies that are looking specifically for um, people that are developing Spanish speaking product or are they developing, uh, really across the board? What's, what, what, what are you seeing in your client base and where do you see the need going? Yeah. So in terms of, uh, of our talent, um, firstly, it was mostly because of connections that we started, uh, sourcing from Ecuador, 
But as we expanded, we saw that the best talent comes from Argentina. This is from our own personal experience that we have seen in terms of developers, in terms of remote professionals. The best talent comes from Argentina. And, you know, and my actually my partner in the business is also Argentinian. So we started sourcing mostly from Argentina. That's where most of our talent comes from. But we also still, you know, find people sometimes from Ecuador or Mexico. Uh, Brazil is also a good place when it comes to, to developers as well. But Argentina is where I would say 80% of our talent comes from. And in terms of our clients, it's all over the board. I think just um, um, when it comes to people that work with us, our people are looking for bilingual speakers. So we have realized this, especially in the construction in industry, that you know they're looking for a PM who can speak English and Spanish because most of the workers solely speak Spanish or uh, you know prefer to speak Spanish. So we have seen that kind of as a bridge when it comes to communication between higher ups and, and the workforce. And when it comes to other startups, I think just having uh, people that are in the same time zone, plus the, the culture is very similar to the United States, especially in Argentina, uh, it's just a more of a preference when it comes to the clients that we have worked with. Plus, you know, if, if they can speak Spanish, I think you have noticed that the United States, Spanish is a vital, is a vital language and is increasing all over the board. So if you can be able to have a person that can target that tar the, uh, the Spanish people or the Spanish area is, is of great importance. Sure, and and obviously a, a, a source of uh, growth opportunity for you and your business. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about your journey as an entrepreneur, and you seem to have pivoted many times. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know that's that's the great a, a great trait of entrepreneurs. <laughs> Um, how, how has that come about? You, you, uh, seem to allude that it's, you, you know, you, you just, um, by chance, but I think there's probably something a little bit more than chance. Um, yeah. uh, you know, how have your, your, uh, you know, your, your education and entrepreneurship, how has it allowed you to be able to, uh, determine when the pivot is appropriate and, and how have you capitalized on those pivots? Yeah. I think in terms of, of pivots, I just realized that there was not enough growth. Um, and one, one of, the, of the things that uh, came with, with pivoting in terms, for example, the music industry was that we, we were getting everything for free. So, for example, all the freestylers that went you know, to travel to mainly was Miami to you know freestyle and compete and get sponsored. We would get a hotel free. We would get the, the venue free, the flights free. But there was wow. no way of, of getting capital from the business. So everything was free, which is nice. You know, I, I was one of the people that was also competing. So I was traveling for free. But we I, we couldn't see a way that it could be feasible for us in the future to live off, the, live off that. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the money, the cash flow. Free is good. But at some point, somebody needs, uh, you know, somebody's yeah. going to ask you for some cash, right? Yeah. Whether it's rent or whether it's uh, food or what have you, right? Yes. <laughs> so I think that that was the, the, the main uh, the main like the the main reason why I had to pivot and then I started looking more into services business so I was probably thinking of of creating a marketing agency something that can be recruiting and can give me cash flow uh, because I needed to survive uh, you know all during college I I was my, the only I, I didn't have you know like I said I, I don't come from a wealthy background I was self sustaining myself surviving by the needs. So I needed cash flow to be able to survive, to pay my credit card. Uh, so it was more of a, a a need. Like I need, I needed cash flow coming in, and I had to find a way to do it. So for me, it was just trying everything. But in terms of trying, I tried to sell stuff without having it. So let's say it was a watch. I tried to sell a watch without having it, just to see if the concept was able to be sell. So that's kind of how I try. So I was, I would have an idea on my head. Let's say it would be a coffee. A, let's say it would be um, soccer balls. I would try to sell the soccer ball first. Just to be like, hey, I have the soccer ball that does this X, Y, and C. To see if people would buy. And when people would say, hey, actually, I want to buy that. I'm like, okay, the concept works. So that allowed me to change ideas very quickly. And then I think it was also by chance, but because of, I was trying everything in the books that led me to finding uh, the sourcing of talent and the sourcing of connecting people from Latin America to companies in the United States. I think it was just the practice and I fell many times. Uh, it was, it, it really sucked. So uh, I think just not giving up and knowing my mind that uh, 
like this was like I, I needed to and putting myself in a situation of a poor situation of me finding a way to make money allowed me to come to Interlick stuff. And have you found with Interlix that you're focusing in particular niches or particular business segments? You mentioned construction. Are there other areas that you see uh, great needs given the talent that you can source and and um, you know the, what the market here demands? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. So like you said, construction and also real estate has been the industries that have been more open to our to our services. But from the placement that we have done, I also see law firms. Um, especially immigration law firms, uh, because they're looking, you know, for people that are bilingual, you know, when people, you know, come here to get a green card, you need to have someone that speaks Spanish and English because most of your clients will not be from Latin descent. And that's how we have noticed. We have done a lot of placements of paralegals uh, in, in law firms. So that's an industry that seems uh, interesting. Uh, obviously, most of our placements is in the real estate and construction. Uh, but we are in that same way agnostic. Uh, if you if you have a need, if you need a person in specific, let's say with a specific CRM knowledge or a specific skill set, uh, we we have it. Uh, and actually, our recruitment team is based out of Venezuela, and they are actually more in touch with the people there, with the culture there. They know how the how it works when it comes to sourcing talent down there. So I think that has been a vital uh, key for us to be able to find the best talent in in Latin America. Excellent. Sebastian Parides uh, of Interlink Staffing. It, it, it's it's wonderful to have you on Radio, Radio Entrepreneurs. It's wonderful to hear your story, a true uh, entrepreneurial story from the ground up. If people want to get in touch with you, if they want to talk more about your firm, um, uh, if they want to talk a little bit more about uh, how to use your services or some services that they need, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Yeah, I think the best way, I'm I'm very old school. I, I love, you know, going on phone calls. So if you can call me at 929-272-9516, I will be more than happy to speak with you. Or if you're looking for, for my email, is uh, S and then Paredes, my last name, at interlickstaffing.com. And you can also, you know, send me an email uh, down there. I'm more than happy to to meet with you guys and be able to provide uh, talent from, from Latin America. Wonderful. A great entrepreneurial story. Sebastian Paredes of Interlix Staffing, CEO and founder. Pleasure having you on Radio Entrepreneurs. Thank you, Jonathan. It was a pleasure. And we'll, and we'll be right back with another guest on Radio Entrepreneurs.